Welcome back to Vice Grip Garage and day three of sick week. We are in Valdosta, Georgia. We got to do some maintenance today on all the vehicles and we're going to get ready to run at the track here pretty soon. We're all going to try to set our personal best in our rides. Big block Camaro, the Vanishing Pain Challenger and the LS1 Swamp Monte Carlo. So all the cars are doing great. We made it in really late last night, actually technically early this morning. No issues, thankfully, but after 330 some miles, all of these cars are pretty revved out. They're all three speeds, actually. We're gonna do some maintenance today. I think I'm gonna change the oil on VP. We also are gonna change the sparkulators on that. Potentially even make another Fuel make it happen or adjustment. It was supposed to be 80 and super hot, but it's overcast and actually cold, so we might make another change there. The Monte Barro, we're gonna go ahead and change the shift juice out in the go forward, go backwards machine. The Hughes transmission is working amazing, but this is fresh. This is the first miles it's had, so we're gonna go ahead and swap that out. And then we're all gonna hope to set our PB on all these cars today, so. We'll see what happens. Let me get some fixings and then we're gonna get to the track. Well, we found a spot, actually a really good spot, right up by the lanes here. Well, I guess getting out is a pickle. Look at this G-body. Corp is crispy. Anyway, so here's the, here's the start of, you know, making a mess. That's what we do. Um, today, part of the plan on VP is change up the fuel. We're going to run that 100 octane. And uh, we're going to put some sparklators and stuff in it. Chad said he's good. Ready to run. And over here on the Monte Barrel, we are going to service the transmission. And I'm going to do some keyboard beep booping. Do some up arrows and some other stuff. Uh, it's idling weird right now. And it's stalling going into drive. And that just started. So I got to take a look at that. See if we can figure that out. And that's really it. It's already kind of late afternoon. So we're going to hustle up here. Uh, it sounds like they're in C, no, A and B group right now. I could be wrong. It's hard to say. The lanes aren't full. Normally I just cheat and read them on the glass, you know. But anywho, we're going last today, uh, which is okay. It gives us a little bit of time here. And then we got a trip to, where are we going next? Gainesville after this. Hopefully no breaks today. We just want to set personal best in all the rigs, so. I think I'm going to start with, uh, fueling this thing up really quick and then we'll jump into the sparkulators. Eric's getting ready to drop the transmission fluid on this boy. It's probably not even really needed but it's a brand new unit so I just got to change it a couple few times early on just to make sure we're doing the maintenance on that nice unit. Jessica's been on tire duty all week still nursing my ribs. I'm impressed with these Old school white ovals, they actually ride really nice, don't they, Jeff? Ain't bad. Look, look what Josh brought us. This is incredible. You handmade all this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was tagging me yeah. on his Instaletter stories. So this, like is in, this is all ground in and burnt up a little bit. Yeah. It's beautiful. A little time with the Dremel. Dremel time? Yeah. yeah. Dremel with my special hand. <laughs> nice. You done one of mine probably, <laughs> running through a saw or something. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you so much for this. Oh, you're welcome. It's incredible. Wow. Yeah. You already know where to hang it probably, right? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the last of the fluid change. Just barely any color in there. Little tiny bit of clutch material. 
That is better than average. That's completely normal on a brand new rebuild. You're gonna get a little bit of clutch material. This is what I wanted to get out of the system right away. And uh, this one change this week should be plenty fine for what this car is going through, but I'll probably change it again in maybe another two, 3,000 miles. And then, eh, she'll be fine. So the adjustments we made on the fuel make it happener yesterday were excellent. I watched the, the movie machine thing that Jessica took of the car and we definitely don't have black smoke just billowing out like an Oldsmobile diesel anymore, so that's good. Uh, and obviously picked up speed across the board. I might leave it for now. We'll see. I was expecting it to be hotter today, but eh, is what it is. Any hoos, I had planned on changing the sparkulators at the same time, ran out of time because we were, you know, last to the staging lanes per usual. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out these sparkulators. We'll gander on them, even though it's not gonna give us a true indication because we had rejetted it obviously and then just driven 350 miles, but we'll gander on them anyway. But we're gonna put these in today, make a pass, maybe two, and then drive back to Gainesville. Then we can pull them there and we'll have a really good read on where we're sitting. Also because of that fuels in there, we're gonna throw a timing light on it today and I might just tickle on the, you know, lightning whirler back there with the old ear meter. See if we can get just a little bit more out of this thing. What you guys got going on over here? We are putting in some transmission fluid. Oh, that. Yeah, we just nice and slow. Look at nice you. Slowly, um, it comes out a little bit quicker. Than regular oil? Yeah. <laughs> So things were a nice red color for a little bit. Yeah. All good though. Yeah. I'm a good cleaner rubber. Look at that. Someone from the Air Force brought this over for Derek to give to the boys today. So got some really cool little coins for Bradley and some stickers to the other boys. Of course, got a license plate for the shop. That looked really cool. It's all really neat stuff. Right now I'm just running through the sparkulators. We got an anomaly over here. And uh, can you guess? Oh, I was gonna have them guess which one. Yeah, one is not like the other, and we're getting we're starting to pick up a little bit of engine noise. So I'm starting to wonder if the cam lobe is you know leaving NVIDIA or compression's a little bit different. It's technically a fresh motor, but we did drive it from Arizona to Tennessee at 3500 RPM, That's and true. then it's had. 30, 40 passes on it. It's had 15 Steve Dulcich, uh, John Force burnouts on it. I mean, it's been autocrossed. And, so it might be time to uh, go through this thing again. It's got a lot of good parts on it. Right now, we're just gonna pretend we didn't see that and just put the new one in. Technically, that fixes it for now, right? All the sparkulators look good. We got some dry suit, soot, whatever. There's fireplace stuff on number three, but it's dry. It's not oil. So I'm not too terribly worried about it because we did a lot of cruising or partial throttle stuff. New ones are in. Gonna go ahead and pull off the primary uh, bowl and take a look at those jets. I might, might fatten it up just a tickle today. And then uh, we're gonna make a pass pull that one right back out after it cools down take a look before we head to Gainesville not too worried about it the other Chevrolets ready to rock and here I am with the Mopar Adam's walking away he fixed the idle he uh, came over we started messing with the uh, IOC position because he was noticing it wasn't registering on there and it wasn't hitting the target idle so he said turn the idle up make the IAC do something right and, uh, you know it's not it's a manual transmission engine so it should idle way lower obviously but some of these throttle bodies you can't get closed enough to idle low enough so we commanded the idle up brought a little uh, IAC in life is good with that yep. 
Now it's silky smooth, other than the mist, but don't worry about that. Yeah, the mist is okay. Yeah, that's uh, cam, actually, is what that is. Right, it's, uh, it's got the hog cam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this is good. Heidi should be all set. Trans fluid is flushed, everything's looking good. She's got the uh, trans brake plugged in, so that's done. This is done. I just got to finish the fuel maker happener. Okay, the primaries and the fuel maker happener are adjusted. Watch your hands. Might have to crank it here. Any leaks? Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Good? Ah, yeah, she'll be fine. You think you could drive one of these someday? <laughs> Added uh, two degrees of timing. We're laying it on it pretty hard, but I guess that's what we're doing today is trying to set a personal best, right? I'm gonna leave the air cleaner off too. Got to set tire pressure, and I think we're gonna be just in time for D group because I see them starting to line up actually. How you feeling? I feel pretty good. You got it. I got it. You got it. You're gonna do great. Well, we're kind of waiting around right now. We got. The old shift juice down on the track. Heidi's here about mid-package. Chad is, he was ready to rock. He's all the way up there, number one position. I'm not even in line yet. Vanishing Paints is drifting off in the parking lot somewhere. I think I'm gonna watch both these guys run, then I'll pretend like I'm running across the parking lot, which is just briskly walking. Grab the car, jump back in line probably be you know dead last per usual make a hit for me today because it's getting so late with this oil down it's probably going to be one and done for me because we got so much stuff to load up but Heidi might do another pass today we don't know yet we just don't know these things and uh, same with Chad he really wants to get down you know 11.99 would be awesome he's got some wheel hop issues we're working through and uh, we called the good guys at Nitto Tire they helped us out a little bit with some advice on that tire. Cars make it so much worse for naturally aspirated. He really needs to get into like a coil over adjustable shock, but we ain't got it right now. So we're just trying to make do with what we have. We got three to, three or four different options for setups. We're on one right now. I don't know if he's gonna to wanna to do another one today or not, but we shall see. It is a beautiful Camaro though, I'll tell you that much. It uh, was supposed to be super hot today, but it's actually pretty nice. It's got a slight breeze. What do you think it is, 70, five, 70? Sure. Yeah? That's awesome. This here Camara? Yeah, I like that saying, we feel the same way. Sixty-four at one seventeen. That was the magic. Awesome! Congratulations, Chad. You did it, man. By a long shot. We'll have to, uh, you know, lift some long necks tonight.
1925, that's your new personal best, the 96. It's awesome. So, buddy, tomorrow, 14th. You're killing it. So there's another old patina challenger right in front of this Camaro. And uh, one of the race directors here is going to see if we could line up together just because it'd be cool. So I think that's a big block Mopar. He's going to definitely smoke me. But it'll be a great photo to have on the start line, two old patina challengers. So we'll see what'll happen here. Both Heidi and Chad ran personal best today. So now it's up to me to see if VP can squeeze out another. Let me tell you something, fellers. Get in here. I don't care. It's a lot more fun trying to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. Write that down. This is Derek Berry coming up next. The Vanishing Paint Challenger. Because he's pulling the day of Friday earlier at one point. And then he sold it. gonna be a while I think they got oil down again so Jessica and I are gonna get a head start on packing before the Sun gets way up in the sky and have this thing ready to go we're gonna save on the engine I don't know that we could get much more out of it right now to be honest at least today so we're gonna pack and yeah, get our butts to Gainesville and try to finish this week out strong just as a pro at these tires now on and off Pulled out number three again just to get an update on it, and it looks fine. Good enough. We're getting some light soot all the way around. I think we're just fine. We're going to stick her back in. We'll leave her where she's at. We're going to cruise it. If it starts getting a little bit warmer, we'll pull that timing up. But it's only, it's only a couple degrees. I don't think it's going to hurt any. I think he shrunk a push rod, but he's got her together. Sounds good. Is that a socket? That's what it looked like. Thanks. Oh, they must have changed plugs. <laughs> we uh, splurged. Some guy dropped us off. Vanishing pain. This one's really cool. It's got all three of them in there. Yeah, glare is bad. Yeah, glare is bad, but. Let's turn this way. BP up front. There you go. Oh, now I just see you. Oh, my reflection. Which I mean, that's all right. You can hold it there if you want. There. So that's pretty cool. They're in a nice, like, bowling. Frame, I'm gonna oh my call gosh, it. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah, well, this is like you get your bowling trophies, they're plaques. Yeah. These are all in the bowling alleys on the wall. <laughs> I'll take it. I love this look. Just these old wide ovals spinning away, skinnies up front. Looks cool. But yeah, so we'll 
throw those up on the office wall when we get home. So I've been seeing in the comments there, yep, still read many as I can. A lot of you are really interested in events like this. So I wanted to give you more behind the scenes stuff. So we're done racing for the day and towards the end of the day, they're gonna tell you to turn in your time slips. So what you have to do is take your slip. I always take a picture of it because then you can you know, remember what you did. And then you bring it into this building and you've got all these ladies in here working hard, literally going through a sea of time slips. Look at this. Look at all this. Crazy. They're entering it all into spreadsheets and doing all this stuff. They confirm that you posted on social media your checkpoint and then they're handing us our next route and all that stuff too. So this is just one of the big cogs in the wheel that makes this whole thing turn is these folks working hard back here. So a little bit of behind the scenes. Well, we are loaded up, headed to a fuel station. We got a route and uh, we'll be on the road over passing Mullet here. Huge puddle of oil underneath that thing. I think unfortunately Mullet is out, McFlurry is out, Tom Bailey is out, Steve Morris is out. Andy Cook is out. A lot of really great cars and competitors just having some bad luck. But look at this. I kind of giggle when people say drag racing is dying or it's not a real motorsport or whatever. It's the end of the day. These are all guys still trying to get a hit in today for their class. There's a lot of people. We've had some cool guys today and gals. So we're going to fill up. And uh, I think we got 105 miles or something. Yep. So hopefully not too late. Today. I was in for fuel right before I checkpoint. Look at this. Beautiful. We've been bombing down this back road. There's all this moss covered trees. Jessica loves these things. See them? Yeah. Anywho, so I wanted to report. Why is my hat so crooked? I don't know. We got this thing dialed in now. We were getting about 10 miles a gallon. Well, 10.8, 10.9, 11 sometimes. Just did the math after the track to here. 14.88 MP plus the G's now. So she's, you know, it's the AFRs and the Stoiches and, and whatnot go. By the way, just another reminder, some of you might be tired of hearing about it, but you wanted me to tell you, so I'm telling you. We got a bunch of forehead awnings in stock. They're different flavors and colors. We got these cool flannels in and a bunch of different colors. There's a tons of stuff in the store right now for that Hemi Half giveaway. Your chance to win that Gen 3 Swap C10 pickup. Every $5 gets you an entry, vicegripgarage.com. We're going to try to keep stuff in stock as best as we can, but please take advantage of it while you can because we're running out of time. It ends February 28th, so get it while you can. All right, we're going to fuel up, grab some snacks, and get rolling. I think we've only got like 70 miles left tonight, which is going to be great. We might be at the motel before 1 a.m. I can't believe... Look at this bicycle. Look at the rack on it. Wow. I'll be damned. We just stopped in at our first checkpoint for the day. We have about 50 56 miles, something like that, to the next checkpoint. I think that's the last one for the day. There we'll be going to our motel.
I don't know where we are. Like 29 miles from our <laughs> checkpoint. We pulled over because of a real bad exhaust leak. The pipe just got burned through on the old exhaust. But then I noticed this. She'd miss it really, really bad. And I started pulling injectors. You see how you can clearly tell that that one's firing. I got this one. Nothing. That's a dead miss right here. So I don't know if it's a bad coil or plug or what. So I think I'm going to pull that plug out. We'll take a look. See if we can see what's going on here quick. Well, it's still got oil pressure, so there's hope. We'll see what happens here. We're gonna pull that plug and start diagnosing. We'll go from there. Well, we got sparkles, and I don't know what I did. All I did is took the sparkulator out, checked it, it looked fine, put it back in, hooked this wire thingy hose back up, and now, sure. There must have been something stuck in the carburetor and it just had to, you know, pass through, I think. Okay, you want to just try it up, fire it up and try. Idiot. <laughs> we had a mess which escalated into Dr. Tudemol. What's the software called? Fire breath or something? He's in my computer and he helped us finish the two step. So now we have a high spark rev limiter cut with our trans brake on the same button. Why? Because Heidi's going to run a 13 tomorrow. Same. Right? Yep. Sweet. Can we quote you on that? Yeah, it's already. <laughs> done it's gonna happen all right <laughs> well bill of health update random misfire fixed sure You're welcome look I jiggled on wires I think what it was was the con yeah. original connector not the new Holly one that goes into the main ignition harness but the one that loops around and goes into the coil pack was really hot and crispy and I kind of jiggled on that and uh, we got spark and it started running better. Now, the injector, when I pulled that on and off, wasn't firing or changing the sound of the engine firing. But if I put my fingers on it, I could feel it firing, meaning I think it was still getting fuel. It's just a spark issue, so we're gonna keep an eye on that. The great news is, randomly, we just decided to go ahead and put in that spark or a two-step, as known as, and a spark cut or whatever. So we'll set that tomorrow probably at 2,000 RPM. So now when she holds the button, this was my intention all the way at the beginning. We just never finished it. Holds the button, trans brake goes in, holds it all the way to the floor. It's going to stay at 2,000 RPM right on the torque converter. She lets go of the button. She's instantly wide open and flying down the track. She's going to pick up big time tomorrow. So that's going to be exciting. Anywho, we're going to continue on to our last checkpoint, which I think is only like 30 miles or something like that. And then... Uh, that's gonna wrap it up for today, I think. Well, we made it to our last checkpoint. We're way down south of Gainesville again. You guys are popping tires, doing burnouts in the street, having a good time. We are exhausted though, let me tell you what. We're gonna head straight to the motel, try to get some sleep bright and early tomorrow morning. We're gonna try once again to set a personal best on all of these cars. Chad's gonna try to run a best up to 1150, that's his limit. Heidi's got a two-step we're gonna be programming in. And we might pull out all the stops on old Vanishing Paint here. Kind of thinking about nitrous. Thanks guys for watching, appreciate it very much. We'll see you soon.